I think this is a perfect example and highlight of real estate being a get rich for sure plan, not a get rich quick. It's really about time in the market and not trying to time the market. We bought it at 1.35 million, 11 units, nine townhomes and one duplex. We closed at 1.35 million. So we raised 450,000. When you're going for your first deal, you're going to give a little bit more. I increased the monthly rents from 9,800 to 14,800. Increased the gross income from 117,000 to 181. That's gross, okay? Rents increased for, for about $5,000. If you don't trust yourself, go get three quotes. I like to hold it for at least five years and then see what happens. See where the market takes you. Look at the deals, all right? Don't let all these opportunities pass you by. Over a million dollars in appreciation in five years. In today's video, I sit down with Casey Wong and we check in on a project that you guys may not remember, but we actually walked around this property way back in the day, one of the first videos we did with Casey. And so it's great to be able to catch up with Casey now because he's coming up to the five year term of owning this property. If you guys don't remember, this was one of Casey's first big deals. So it was, I think, a nineplex and a Tuplex that he'd bought together, and it was one of his first forays into getting into the larger multifamily deals. So it's been five years now, and in today's video, Casey dives deep into all the numbers around this project. So we see exactly how he improved the net operating income, how he was able to increase the value of the property, and what the different exit strategies he's considering. Guys, this is it. This is the video you've been waiting for with Casey. So what I need you to do is smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, what I need you to do is jump in that comment section and say more Casey. And finally, sharing is caring. So please share this video. When you guys post it externally as a link to like Reddit groups or Facebook groups, that helps out my YouTube channel so much you don't even know. But in today's video, Casey's gonna dive deep into the numbers for us. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And this is just a masterclass on understanding larger multifamily properties. What is up YouTube? Matt McKeever here and Casey Wong's on the live stream. Hey Casey, how's it going? Good, good, Matt. How you doing? Good. So I'm really excited for this video because I know the fans are going to absolutely love it. Casey's going to break down for us a deal that he did five years ago that he's currently looking at exiting. And so I think this is a perfect example and highlight of real estate being a get rich for sure plan, not a get rich quick. And so I know a lot of people on my YouTube channel, they love the idea of getting rich quick. But yeah. for you, for myself, when we're getting into these apartment buildings, it's really about time in the market and not trying to time the market, right? Right, that's right. So let's do a quick little background history on this property. I did that video and that's, I like to call it the whatnot video because I say that so many times. So this <laughs> is like the Duke and Wellington property. It's basically a five minute walk to Google's head office. Google was uh, in Waterloo for about 20 years-ish and they moved over to Kitchener um, and they have a, they, they actually built a new brand new office uh, five years ago, uh, 2015, we took a look at this property and we said, okay, well, this looks pretty good. We had that 10 plex in Kitchener downtown. The, the market was very strong. Um, we look, I actually wanted to, to buy it, but I didn't want to sell my 10 plex. Um, and this is before the 51 bed, uh, student housing in Waterloo. So back then we we're upgrading, uh, getting bigger properties. Um, and we are actually, I also want to touch upon. Uh, investors as well. Uh, but I want to talk about the deal. So let's talk about the deal. It was an 11 unit. Uh, back then, this is 2015. Okay, this is not a get rich quick scheme. It actually does take some time. It could take five years, 10 years, I like to do five year increments. Um, don't don't try to sell it within a year. Or two. Like if you're doing a buy and hold strategy, buy and hold for about five years, minimum five years. If you're doing a flip strategy, that's not you're not gonna hold it for five years, you're gonna flip it as, as quickly as possible. And you're gonna maximize that income. Um, but this is a buy and hold. It's a five year. We bought it in August, um, 2015. We'll go through the numbers. YouTube, get ready. I know you guys are going to lose <laughs> your shit on this. So boom, here we okay. go. So Duke and Wellington, this is right at the corner of Duke and Wellington street, right in the downtown. Well, right in Kitchener. Okay. Uh, literally if we do a map, uh, Google map, it's literally a five minute walk to, to Google's head office. Uh, we bought in May, sorry, not August, but May 15th, 20, sorry, this is, sorry, <laughs> we bought in August. So, um, this August is 2015, our, right? Yeah. Yeah. August. And, and so 
what was that neighborhood like five years ago? Was it the same as it is today? Has Google moving there changed a lot? Did you guys yeah. know that this was going to be an on the rise neighborhood or what was your thoughts? Our thoughts was Google was, was there. They were just building. So they had their sign up. Uh, it was up and coming. A lot of the, uh, basically about two or three streets over the downtown core, the condos were moving. The condos were actually being built at the same time. So we saw the infill. We saw all of that. We saw um, uh, made like big construction buildings, not too many small constructions for the houses, but a lot of developers coming in, major developers. So that's what we saw and that's what we liked. So it was literally right before the, the big boom coming uh, coming to Kitchener. So let's go to the second slide. This is a slide that uh, we just presented on May 15th to uh, uh, 2020, what, four days ago today or five days ago. Today's May, May 20th. So when we bought this property, I'm just going to show you all the information. The property closed on August 10th, 2015. And we bought it at 1.35 million. Okay. 11 units, nine townhomes and one duplex. Okay. Average income per month was only $9,823, all right? The average rent was $893 per month. So average rent per unit. These are the townhomes. We had a duplex there. Uh, so overall, income was low on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. so the gross income was $110,000 per year, and then NOI was $71,414, okay? The expense ratio was 39%. So I'm going to uh, touch upon this as well. So yeah. We closed at 1.35 million. That's now today at five years. It sounds like a steal at 1.35 million at that time. Does. At that time, it, that was a market. The market was one at 1.35 million, and you know what? It wasn't. Um, it was a good deal, uh, but it wasn't spectacular. I, I can't say that. Oh my goodness, this is a, a slam dunk. It was a. It was a good deal. We presented to our investors, and they liked it as well. Uh, 11 units, nine townhomes and one duplex. Was this on the market or was it a private deal? I like to say it's private. We went through Kyle Church for this one. Um, Kyle Church, he worked for Roller Page. Um, he brought it to us and we quickly we quickly um, uh, put an offer on. So we, we tied it up. Uh, I believe it was a private deal. Gotcha. We're selling this property now as a private deal as well. So a lot of these deals are pretty... Um, uh, yeah, they don't even reach MLS sometimes because, you know, I don't we don't want to deal with it. We have a few. Uh, we actually have about three people that's interested, three groups of people that's interested. Uh, but if you're in touch with the uh, uh, the commercial real estate agents, a lot of these deals are private. OK, mm -hmm. uh, so for your listeners, make sure that you uh, uh, get a hold of the um, the experience, the the real estate agents that are in the commercial side. And a lot of the deal th flow is is more private. So on this deal, Casey, do you remember, how did you structure or finance it? Because I know that's always one of the biggest questions the audience has. You know, they look at this and like, okay, yeah. this seems cool. This is exciting. But like, how do I actually put together the deal? So do you remember how this all kind of came together? Yeah, it was um, a conventional mortgage. We put 25 down. Uh, I believe it was with... So we have a good relationship with them. We have... Um, some relationship with some second tier, to be honest with you, the, the first tier, um, they're usually very good. Um, we used our, um, our other properties as collateral as well. Um, and then we, the structure was, was, was simple. You know, there's a, essentially a GP and an LP structure. So that, okay. Uh, that's a structure. Is that what you're, yeah, that yeah, no, that's exactly it. Yeah. And then like, I don't know how trend like how down this rabbit hole you're willing to go but i know people constantly just want they're trying to wrap their heads around it so in okay. essence you said you put 25 percent down so okay. essentially that means you came up with what we're looking at maybe three hundred and fifty thousand around that amount um yeah as the down payment that's right so, let me go go ahead so then i was just going to ask was this your money was this your money partner's money was it a combination oh and how do you decide where that money comes from and how much equity to give up. And I know sometimes these can be complicated, very specific questions, but I know the audience would even just love a high level explanation. Sure. So we raised 450,000, 25% down was only 340,000. Uh, the re remaining portion was closing costs, um, uh, capital improvements. Um, 
we need uh, uh, the reserve fund just for uh, um, you know turnover things like that. So we raised four hundred fifty thousand for this project. Three hundred thirty seven thousand five hundred was to uh, as a, as the uh, deposit the twenty five percent down. Yeah. Um, and then what we did was uh, structure. I believe we gave we gave quite a bit away. Uh, I think it was a twenty or eighty split, eighty percent for the investors or. 25 75 this is our first deal okay when we have a first when you're when you're going for your first deal you're going to give a little bit more away to the investors you're going to you're going to make your investors happy when i when we flip over to the next slide uh, slide two or three it's going to show um uh um like a great great return but your first investor for your for your viewers now make sure that you take care of your investors because what happens is that Pretty much half of your investors, and even on this deal, they're going to come back and invest again. Okay, mm -hmm. so again, it snowballs. They invest a hundred thousand, you give them back two hundred and fifty thousand, which is a hundred thousand uh, return of principal and a hundred fifty thousand uh, return. They're going to probably come back with two hundred or two hundred fifty or even more. They could mm -hmm. come out with five hundred thousand. They want to test you out. So remind me, Matt, to talk about investors and how to capital, uh, how to raise capital, things like that. I'm Will not an do. expert on raising capital. Trust me, I'm not. Uh, Jed is, uh, she's the expert on that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm basically a gopher. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> properties, I collect coins and whatever. I, I talk to contractors and tenants, right? Um, but yeah, hopefully that answers your question. The yeah, break, that was perfect. Yeah, 20, 20, 80 split or 25, 75 split. Um, usually you don't want to go. Now our, our, um, our deals are anywhere from about 30, to 70 or 40 60 split okay so that makes it worthwhile for us to continue if you go down to 2080 you it's it's very low i have actually uh one um actually two private equity companies that want to uh invest with us and they want to do 80 20 this is pretty much all the money that you want here it is but they wanted an 80 20 split and they had a huge water like a, a pretty high waterfall um for us to to reach on a regular basis so essentially if you're just doing the 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 private deals uh the deals with investors um that 30 70 or 40 60 split is very comfortable for you as an operator okay so mm -hmm. let's go back to uh the average income per month the 9800 um the average rent so when you take a look at it you're going again take a look at the area um, the average rent was 893 for townhouses. Like this is all like, it, it's cheap. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, that there's a lot of gravy on that. Th this property in itself will generate quite a bit because a three bedroom townhome at about 900 bucks, a thousand dollars was very low back then. It's mm -hmm. low. If it's now, um, yeah. our average rent is a little bit, uh, it's at 1200. So let's, let's flip over to the next page. So what we have done in the past five years, we convert the management office into a bachelor egress windows, uh, make sure that, uh, I got a fire consultant in, in there. Everything was good. So I changed it from 11 units to 12 units. I increased the monthly rents from 9,800 to 14,800. All right. A significant mm -hmm. increase. Yeah. Average, uh, the increase to average rent per unit went from 893 to 1230. Currently, uh, we're in the year 2020. This is still low. We can still bump mm -hmm. it up. Okay. We added parking for $3,000. Uh, increased the gross income from 117000 to 181. That's gross. Okay. Yeah. Your increase in NOI went from 71000 to 126000 Reduced expense ratios from 39% to 30%. Okay. And this cash distributions to my, to my, to my investors at 6% paid quarterly. So... What does that mean? Um, let's break it down. Uh, let's start with the bachelor. Just quickly converted that. Made sense. Rented it out. Current rent is about nine hundred dollars. Oh, sorry, eight hundred dollars. Excuse me. Um, and I imagine like every property you go into, I know we do this all the time too. You're always looking for those value adds, right? So right. like, is the laundry room too big, and can I make it smaller and find an apartment? Is there yep. a storage locker room that really doesn't need to be yep. there? things like that or an office is another great way to find kind of hidden square footage right that you're taking from being unproductive square footage to very productive square footage yeah it's not, it's not rocket science you take a look at a space you can you can carve it out carve it out right this is not uh 
um, a huge technology company where I need like really smart people. Dude, you just walk into a room and say, hey, can I rent this out? That's all it is. <laughs> right, yeah, we're, not 100%. Really bright, we're not really bright, bright people. You look at a space and you, if you can rent it, we're renting it. We're renting it, right? Yeah, right. exactly. Um, rent increase for, for about $5,000. Um, what else? Added parking. I did those little parking passes. So yeah. And so the parking, I think, is something that's really important that a lot of landlords overlook, right? Is yep. like literally just by converting it into paid parking. One, hopefully your tenants are going to take better care over all of the parking lot. You're able to set much more specific rules and regulations around it as well. Yep. I don't know if you're doing separate contracts related to your parking or whether it's oh, yeah. kind of. Yeah. And so I think that that's very important long term as well, because, you know, there's a lot of things we can unpack there, but a separate parking rental agreement in Ontario doesn't fall under the same regulations as your uh, apartment rental agreement. So, That's you right. know, there's there's no rent control on parking spaces. That's right. So what I normally do is that um, I, I give them a deal. I give them a break. I'm actually at market right now. Um, let's say if I'm renting out by, uh, let's say at Duke and Wellington, it's about $1,400 for three bedroom and then parking is $50. I usually say, hey, here it is $50. Usually they say, sometimes they say, you know, well, I don't need the parking right now, whatever. You touch upon a point where if I usually give them a $50 deal, let's say hey, it's $50. After which, if you don't want it, it's not on the lease. I sign a separate agreement with you. It's actually $75. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you can, you can work with, uh, with tenants if they have an extra vehicle or things like that. Or sometimes you don't want to sign right away. Okay. So that's a, that's a great point. Um, and it, uh, let's talk about the expense ratio. So we dropped it from 39% to 30%. Uh, a lot of it was, um, I think it was a management fee. Um, so we're doing in-house. We got that drop down. That's not really significant. I think some of the uh, uh, utility costs, we were paying for some of the utility costs for the old tenants. They turned over. Uh, that dropped. Um, so that expense ratio, if you do 40, if you're dropping it down to less than 40%, it's significant. That's doing really well. Yeah. yeah. And I think another big thing there too, understanding about when you offload the utility responsibility to the tenant, yeah. you also reduce the variability in your income. You actually have a more yeah. consistent like net income occurring because when we do, when we are paying for utilities for the tents, sometimes maybe we win some months, maybe we lose some months, but we get a much more variable, inconsistent monthly income because of those yeah. fluctuations in utilities. Whereas That's if right. the tenants are solely responsible, we don't have to worry about that variability. Yeah, yeah. You, you hear my kids crying, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is normal in COVID. <laughs> you mean you don't have to delete this? No worries. So this is normal life. So <laughs> you have when you when you're working at home and you have kids we have four kids it's it's crazy right so touching upon that yeah major like if you can obviously increase that rental income your mm -hmm. gross rent then your expenses are going to go down that's your spread you're making money on that okay so uh that is what else should we talk uh, talk about um i guess maybe the last one i know a lot of uh aspiring investors are going to have questions around you know when do you decide to do distributions and what does that look like? And, you know, even what sort of reserves does Casey Wong want to keep for each yeah. property? Do you have a set rule? So we normally do, I believe it's about three or six months worth of rental income that we keep just in our bank. Um, the, all the cap X, when we, whenever you're doing uh, the walkthrough, like that's my part is that when I do a walkthrough, I say, okay, well, this roof is going to go, um, this boiler is going to go. So roof, let's say it's approximately uh, tar and gravel. will be about $10 a square foot. You're going to pace it out and you're going to know how much that's going to cost. Or you can get three quotes. If you don't trust yourself, go get three quotes. When you have it, um, mm -hmm. uh, when you're doing your due diligence on a property, that's what you're going to do. You're going to do your due diligence on a boiler system. So on a boiler system, I changed it on my uh, Linwood property. It was $30,000, right? Just to shy, like around, let's say $30,000 yeah. for a 32 unit building. So that, let's say 100 plus a 32, plus three months or six months worth of uh, rent, rental payments. And these are all your capital expenditures. You're going to keep that in reserve, right? So 100 plus 32 plus six, uh, let's say three or six months worth, plus you're getting that cash flow, plus you're getting cash flow. You're, you, 
in the first couple of years, you're going to, you know, it's going to be very, very uh, low, but you're going to build that up, build that up as well. Right when your roof caves in or you have to change it, bang, you're going to 100,000 because it's sitting there, right? Or in a money market fund or whatever. Mm -hmm. when you have that money already. You're not going to go back to your investors and say, hey, you know, um, I'm kind of short 100,000, right? You're not going to do that. So you have that money. You, you raise it, right? So remember when I talked about your raising, if you're raising that 25 down, you're raising the capital expenditure costs, all of that. So whatever that 25% plus, 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 that's your raise. That's you just keep that on, keep that on the side, keep that in your bank. Okay. So, um, and then when do you distribute? Okay. Cash distribution. We normally don't do any kind of cash distribution until two years out, two or even three years out. Okay. How we, we saw even uh, through our experience, is that the first couple of years, first two or three years, it's it's going to be tight. You can have probably mm -hmm. a lot of turnover. You're, you're going to have unexpected um, uh, maintenance costs, or you have to change this or that. Like it could be a lot. It could be um, uh, the city comes along and condemns your balcony railings or something, and then now you have to go get an engineer. You have to do your railings. Um, cost could be about forty five dollars a linear foot for for railings for aluminum, uh, up to probably about sixty dollars. Okay, so. Though that's something that you have to be cognizant of that you don't pay out too much at the beginning to your investors. Um, so a couple first two years or three years, you're not gonna pay your six percent, but the after which you can start paying your six percent. Six percent, we do it paid quarterly. So six percent divided by four or divided by three, and then paid on a quarterly. Is it uh divide by four? four. And pay, yeah, and divide by four, right? Mm -hmm. Um quarterly, right? So very, very simple. That's that's what you do. Um, and then after, I like to hold it for at least five years and then see what happens, see where the market takes you. We're, we're in the midst of COVID right now. So, but this was our plan uh, 2015, right? So yeah. we bought it. We knew that we're going to exit in 2020, regardless of what's going to happen, right? So we talked to the investors uh, and they, they, they know and they knew that this is going to come up, right? So they said, okay, well, we're in the midst of COVID. What's going to happen? Is it a bad time to sell? Okay. One of my other, uh, actually my hairdresser goes, uh, <laughs> well, she's not in a financial field. She's a hairdresser. She's a smart lady. She actually saves quite a bit of money. Right. Uh, she, she asked me, like, uh, she tells me, goes, this is the worst time to sell. I go, no, this is a multifamily. It's based upon income. My, this is fully occupied. It's a hundred percent, um, uh, occupied with all the tenants paying. So this is a great business. And she, well, she, you have to explain sort of these things to her mm -hmm. she's been on the sidelines for 12 years my daughter's 12 years old the oldest one is 12 years old right she's been on the sideline for 12 years so she's been waiting waiting for that perfect deal dude don't wait for 12 years i've been telling her don't wait don't keep on waiting and waiting there's you you could have been part of my deals like to be honest with you i presented this deal to her at that time five years ago you want to buy a 11 unit building for 1.35 million and she goes nah, let me sit on it let me wait Five years later, I, I actually presented to her. I said, you want to buy this? It's 2.5 million. Oh, let me wait. Let me think about it. Bang. I, I called it this morning. I go, you know what? There's an offer on the table. There's an, there's actually an offer on tonight now. Right? Yeah. So for you investors, right? You guys are probably younger than her. Okay. You're not. She's about 57 years old or 58. You guys have the time. All right. Take that time. Do your due diligence. Get your 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 knowledge, your your education up there. Okay. Um, and look at the deals. All right. Don't let all these opportunities pass you by. All right. There's a lot of good deals, right? These deals don't look great at the time you're buying it. Right, Matt? All mm -hmm. the deals yeah. I'm very are, familiar with that. Yeah. They're, they're, they're pretty average. They're like, they like, didn't look like a slam dunk after five years. Damn it. It looks, it's a slam dunk. Yes, right? it is. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, uh, the last page here. Okay. So now what? Option one, we sell it right for two, for two mil minimum. We sell it for two million dollars. We already have an offer for two point five million. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Mark Loeffler, he he's bringing us yep. an offer. We have a, I think you know him. Uh, yeah. He, he he put something on YouTube uh, about our deal. Um, we have another friend that's interested. We have another uh, group that's interested as well. So we have three offers right now. We haven't even, it's not even on MLS, but two and a half million is not bad. Okay. Projected mm -hmm. return for investors, cash distribution, including at 20%. It's going to be a lot more. It's probably about 30 something, 30 odd percent return. 
Option two. Amazing. Yeah. Keep holding and extend for another five years or, or, or less. Um, so that's another option. Excuse me. Option three. If the majority wants to stay in, we need to pay out the outgoing, okay, partners at mm -hmm. the appraised value. Get an independent appraiser, appraise it, uh, or we can accept new investors at the uh, – um, or accept new uh, replacement partners. So that's an option as well. So we normally don't um, – put all these options like for, for our other deals right now, it's getting a little bit bigger. We have to, you, you're the shot caller. Okay? Yeah. You as the operating partner, you do what's best for the majority of the investors. Okay. I'm not, when you take a look at it, your, your, your side is going to be a lot smaller. You're, you're 30% or your 40% in this case, about 25%, whatever they make, what, what you maximize your portion, they're going to be maximizing their portion as well. So it's a win-win for everybody. So they, uh, the majority, I think in our, um, uh, LPA agreement, the limited partnership agreement, uh, we have, um, we have a saying that 60% of the raised capital, um, if we reach that in, in terms of, let's say voting, right? So okay. let's say for 450,000, we raised 450,000, 60% of that is a dollar value. So 60% of those dollar, like those people or that one group wants to sell bang you sell okay that triggers it all right as simple as that mm -hmm. um the next some other clause that we put in right now is that we take the uh, the onus of um uh selling or refinancing things like that for for our investors um which makes it a lot easier so then there's no stalemate there's no um investors that don't know what to do right so we yeah. make a decision for them we can sell it we can refinance it uh, get them out, but hey, if they invested a hundred thousand, Matt, five years later, I say here, here's two hundred sixty thousand, right? So mm -hmm. here's back and here's an extra one hundred sixty thousand, right? It's it's pretty yeah. nice. It's pretty Absolutely. nice, Absolutely. especially during the COVID, right? Say I slap you. We have one investor with a hundred thousand. He say, whatever, five years. Here, here's two hundred fifty thousand, right? So manage your investor's expectation. Deliver. Um, make sure when you deliver, you put these things on paper after the five years, see what happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a full circle. We've done it. We do it. Um, in this case, Hey, I didn't put any money in, but I had a lot of hard work to do. Right. So yeah, there's always, there's always something, um, you have to, you have to just actually just go and do it. It's not that difficult, but all these steps, you can always look over your shoulder or, or, or ask somebody, right? You say, Hey, what are other people doing? What would you do? You can get a coach. You can get, I'm not, a, sorry, I'm not a coach. Okay. <laughs> <I'm gonna make laughs> really cool. Cause I've got a lot of coaching uh, people asking for Request. coaching. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not a coach. Um, but I just helping you guys out. Um, my, my, my background is in property management. I work for cap Um, so I have some experience, not a whole lot of experience. And I, to be honest with you in real estate, this game of real estate is, it's simple. You don't even have to be the best, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be the best hamburger restaurant in town. You just have to be McDonald's, right? Yeah. You have to be efficient, effective. You just have to go there, manage ex expectation. And you know what? After five years, these are the returns that you provide your, to your investors. Your family and friends will be your core group at the beginning you have no experience in real estate. You're going to have to show them what you have done, your experience, um, your know-how. You're going to have to walk through the buildings with them. It's actually about like consistency and being in this for the long haul. 20 years, 20, 25 years, okay? You do very well with that with that cash flow. My, my goal is to maximize rent, okay? Decrease the expenses, maximize rent. I'm very operational. Demand is still very high. It hasn't changed. The COVID situation never really changed our demand and supply of our housing. Time is not your determining factor for business. Because if, you're, if your business cycle is not there, why are, you, why are you gathering so many units? Throw money at it or hold cash. Thanks again to Casey for taking the time and the energy to break down in such detail this entire deal. I mean, 
10, 15 years ago, when I was just thinking about getting into real estate investing, man, do I wish there were videos like this from experienced practitioners like Casey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. If you guys want more Casey, what I need you to do is jump in the comment section and let us know that you want more Casey. Otherwise, in the meantime, to satisfy your Casey needs and wants, we'll throw up a playlist right here. And if you don't like that playlist of Casey, we'll throw another one down here. Thanks again, guys, so much. I hope you're enjoying these videos we're doing during quarantine. I know it's a little bit different than the videos we've done in the past, but let me know what other guests should I catch up with? Jump in that comment section. Let me know who would you like to see me interview next on my YouTube channel, whether they're a new or reoccurring guest. I'll see you guys in the next video.